Hello everyone, as here we have stopped by with Awaken Realms and Martin here is going to give me a quick example of Nemesis, a game I am incredibly excited about. After playing Lords of Hellas as our Let's Play over at BeastOfWar.com, I am thrilled to see what they're doing with Nemesis. Now, Martin, you're going to give me a little overview of what we're going to be doing as we work together to fight these things? Yep. Those are intruders, and yeah. So basically, Nemesis is a game about um, a, a ship that I will just give you a quick synopsis of, of what is happening. So basically, you are sleeping. You are asleep in the hibernatorium. And I sleep a lot, I sleep a lot. Yeah. <laughs> so perfect game. It's a game about sleeping. No. <laughs> so, so you wake up because one of your teammates that were also asleep is dead. Okay, okay. And you, you know, like, you're after, just after sleep, you have amnesia. You, you don't remember exactly how the ship looks like. What you remember is that somewhere on the back there are engines. Okay. Somewhere on the front, there are coordinates. Makes sense, yep. Yeah. So that's all you know, but you know, like you fear some noises all around. Oh, yeah, oh right, okay. There are some noises on the ship. And what do you need? You need to start exploring, and every of the person has some secret objective. Okay. And those secret objectives can be very helpful, like get the ship to Earth in one piece. Okay, make yeah. So, yeah. But some of the other objectives can be kill your friend. Oh, so there's a betrayer, you could have... You never know, exactly, but even if you want to kill someone, you need to cooperate with them, because the game is so hard that if you will not cooperate, you will be dead, for sure. <laughs> so it's balancing working together, but also doing your own thing yes. and not getting turned into one of yep. these beasts. And, and it will actually give you so many, because the game has so much things that you can keep in secrets. For example, you're going to the engine room, right? And you can check whether the engine is working or not, but you are not showing it to anyone. So oh. Say, well, you know what? It's not working, so I will make it work. Oh, that's so sneaky. And you, you could maybe force someone to have or to go you're there. Like, you're like, okay, so we're going to the uh, uh, to Earth because, you know, like, for example, we can tell them this is the, what coordinates men means, right? So you can say, like, okay, we're going to Earth, but your secret objective it tells you we're going to Mars. Oh, that's so filthy. Everyone, you know, like, yeah, we're going to hibernation after all that troubles with intruders. We're finally going home and the end of the game, like, well, you know, guys, we're going to Mars, right? <laughs> and how many players does it play? Uh, it's, it's one to five players. Okay. You can play it solo, but, you know, like, you miss the whole the betrayal aspects, which, you know, like, really makes it, really. It can cost you a girlfriend or a friend. <laughs> <laughs> There's no relationships on the table. I always say no no relationships yeah, on gaming. So how do, we, how do we start then? Yeah, all right. So uh, first of all, what you'll be doing is you're picking your secret objective out of two objectives. Okay. No, 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 yeah. Oh. Secret so we'll give a couple examples to you guys at home of what these look like. So we're not going to worry too much about these. We're not going to go through a full game game uh, play. We're just going to kind of show how to how to choose. And these do these are specific for how many players you have in the game. Uh, yes. Yeah. So you can. You, so yeah, you know you're not going to get objectives that don't matter in a in a five player game, uh, for but, example. But basically, what it does is that it gives you kind of a choice. Where Absolutely. You want to kind of be a team player. Yeah. Or more of a you know. Ah, so you're not completely forced to be a betrayer necessarily. So you okay. Always have a choice to. That's cool. I like I like that. I'm a good guy. Even during game, you can say like, you know what. My objective doesn't make sense anymore, so I'm discarding it and I'm taking alternative objective. Oh, okay. And those are done in a way that you can always uh, meet the condition, but they are harder. But you always can meet the condition. No That's way. really nice, actually. It keeps it flexible, and as you reveal the ship, it's going to let you be a bit more agile with your strategy. Yeah. Exactly. Right. Yeah. So, okay, we picked our objectives. Now we are picking, uh, uh, picking our uh, starting characters. Yeah, and I've got the pilot here. Yeah. You got the pilot. Check that out. So, with a shotgun and emergency jump key. Uh, these are my yeah. starting items. Those are starting items, and they are loaded. So you have two ammunition parts on the on the shotgun. I hate games that make you track ammo, especially when they involve aliens. Oh no! Whenever you have to spend five, one action, it, the actions are really hard in this game, one action just to load one ammo, then you will feel the pain. Oh <laughs> no! It's running down the corridor and I'm reloading my gun. That's, that's the one thing that you need to get right about this game. This is not a game about shooting aliens, it's yeah. a game about trying to live. That's Survival. Basically, <laughs> Not here, like you're not here to kill. You're here to just try to barely make it through, and perhaps you will not be infected by the end of the game. So that's okay. So how does a, a player turn work then? Sure. So you get six cards. So I draw these and these form a, a hand. And those are basically your actions. So I'll show I'll show a couple under the camera here. So we've got to repair uh, computer skills. For the character. 
So okay. For example, you got pilot, and he'll be good with the computers. He'll be good with, you know, like steering the ship, and you can. Uh, but in combat, he'll not be that good. But I have a scout. Okay. And the scout can move out very clear, uh, very quietly, so the intruders will not spot him. And how many different characters have you got in the game at the minute? Uh, five. Five. Awesome. Cool. That's five. So we, every character is actually good at something. This is why it like making it harder to cooperate because you really need to rely on your your friends to help you. I need you to steer the ship to the planet I want to go to. <laughs> yeah, exactly. So there's a lot of you know like above the table playing where you need to you know like try to manage your team and so everybody will be the, the, with your direction, right? So it was your turn then. Yeah. What what would you do? So basically, I have some actions six actions and this is basically whatever I can do so I, what I can do is I can use whatever of those or discard the card to move okay uh, or you know like use I can use the message I, I will show you yeah let's let's see something that's what would you like to do so I'm discarding the rest card okay. and I'm moving my scout in here whenever I move I uh, I, I am um, I am rolling the noise dice what it does it simulates that Whenever we move, there is we are generating noise. Yeah, absolutely. And the noise is bringing intruders. So the more people are moving in the same rooms, the higher the possibility that something will yeah. pop in here, right? Please walk gently. Four. And you're rolling a D10? D10, yes. Okay. And it can have you know like four results or X, which means that there's a silence, or a like a explanation mark, which means like you knocked over a metal canister, you, <laughs> you tripped that wire. That... Yeah, that's basically. It. Okay. So okay, I, I roll four, so I'm taking the one of the objective, and I'm putting in the corridor four. Okay. Whenever next player will roll four in here, something will get. In. Oh, so your noise actually corresponds to the directions you're making the noise. Oh. All right. So I'm here, and what do we have it? So we have. Um, the command center so I can discard here two action to lock or unlock all the doors of the ship right all the doors of the ship so, like, oh pick one and just unlock or lock one so yes you're gonna trap me in a room with that intruder and then lock the door I'm not saying that I am <laughs> what, what is really cool about this game that every room is unique I, and there is randomized? yeah and is and you never know what is where and for example, you can. There's a room that you can start auto destruction process for the ship. There's a room when you can heal yourself. There's a room when you can cut out infection from your body. There's oh, laser cutter and rip it out, throw it away. Oh, that's so cool. So there's so many rooms out there, and you always explore. Okay, so. But and there's, there's there's more than than on the board as well. So there's you've got even extra, so it's even more random every game. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So basically, what. This is the exploration token. What it tells me is how many items are in the room. Yeah. So I have two items. So you have those numbers here. So I'm placing okay. them here mm -hmm. on two. And there's also a special effect. This means that when I enter the room, the doors shut down behind me. Oh, so we actually have little door standees to represent that that's just locked behind you there. Yeah. So perfect. Yeah, no one can enter it. But also, okay. So my next action will be to actually use my surge action, which which basically allows me to take one item from the game. So this is the red. Uh, this is the command center, and me it corresponds with the red items. So I'm taking red item, and they are mostly weapons and stuff. Okay. So I get energy charge. Nice. So that's going to be used for like plasma weapons, energy weapons, non shotguns, pistols, more advanced. And you can basically um, you can basically keep them in secret as well. So. Oh my god! Wow, that's yeah, good. Exactly. Oh yes, I got a health kit for you. No problem. So <laughs> if you if you basically like games where you can be really bad person, that's <laughs> that's the game for you. <laughs> <laughs> Justin, this might be for you, buddy. I gotta love you. <laughs> All right, but basically. Okay, so what I took one item, so I'm changing the number of items. Oh, that's a really lovely way of tracking. So the room just stays where it is, yeah. but you can track very easily. Okay. So how much items are in there? Okay, so whenever I took it, I will probably travel to the next room just to you know, yeah. like see. And how many actions do you get each turn? Uh, the number of cards. Oh. So every turn you're drawing up to six cards, but uh, whenever you'll be in the same room as the monster, so as the intruder, you actually get only two cards. Oh. And there is also a risk in playing cards because the cards represent how much tired you are. If you'll take all six action, you are very tired. And whenever, whenever alien will enter your room, you will get to draw from a panic deck. 
this represents, you know, like, those are normal humans. Whenever you see I'm an alien, you know, like, eh, that's okay, it's just like, another being from another side in my room, that's okay. You, 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 you can panic. And this shows you that if you have less than three cards on your hand, you're exhausted, you're you get panicked by the alien. You are getting panicked, and for example, you can shoot all your ammo up the Oh floor. no! Or just like that. <gasps> so basically, you have all those. That's very cool. Yeah. Uh, so that gives you a nice risk reward. You can do lots of things, but you're going to leave yourself vulnerable. Yeah, okay. Especially that there's an even deck, and even if you are pretty safe, the even deck can do it. Okay, but well, the, another round will be I will just, you know, like move. Okay, yeah. Do you another room? Yeah. You, may, you want to move this way? Do you want to, um, okay. yeah. Can you move there? Oh, you want to move another direction. Yeah, I can move it here. So this is a shower room. Okay. Because... Oh, this is this is a horror movie special here. The, the shower's on and there's a shadow behind the water. There's a creepy tail spinning around. But, but because what, what you can do, whenever you meet the intruder, they can actually uh, put like a special goo on you. And wow. you, uh, they will track you even without you making noise. So in shower room, you can actually shower off from it. Oh, that's cool. That's really awesome. Like, all, all the rooms are like that. They're very cinematic in a way. That yeah. you have, like, you have those oh, you can feel it. Yeah. And do you, ha you have to roll for noise? Uh, yeah, I need to roll for noise. <gasps> that's an exclamation mark, everybody at home. That's an exclamation mark. Oh, yes, we got a black bag, which is always a good sign. Black bag to decide what's, what will happen or whatever who will be. And the events will tell you to kind of change the content of it. So during the game, you have higher chance to... Because those species are there and they are evolving. So the longer the game, the higher the chance that you will meet one of the bad bikes. And do, do they evolve over time? Just yes. on their... Oh, no. Okay, so I have some token and it will be... The old intruder. Ah, so just if you come in, Ben, you can see here. So it's a warning token, but then randomly drawn from the bag on the other side then, we can see that we have an old intruder, which means he's mature. He's like an adult. Which, this, and this, is, this is the one. Oh, man. So he's uh, like rank three out of the five. And he just spawns in your room? Yeah. That's what happens when you uh, walk into the shower and just start turning the, turning the taps on and the pipes go... <laughs> it, it, it gives you the, the feeling of drawing from the... It gives you like... You're putting your hand into the nest of bees and there's like, God, don't be a queen, don't be a queen. <laughs> <laughs> and so do you want to show me, normally it would be your turn and then my turn, but then how do the aliens activate? What, what, how does, what controls their deck? So, so basically you have the uh, events deck, which shows you uh, what monster move in what direction. Okay. And basically what happens. There are different events that can happen. Uh, for example, if you have a fire, because you can also have a fire on your ship, it can spread Ma out. Martin! Martin! You I mean, that's, that's <laughs> wow! <laughs> I mean, this guy was actually designing this game. And Passing the buck for the fear. Yeah, but you know, I am the one who needs to develop it. <laughs> it's like so many things that can happen, you know. It's so good. The tension is amazing, though. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But what, it, what would it do then? But it would move according to the event card. Yes, exactly. It will move. And some, some of the aliens always move. If they can, they will move when you're uh, in the direction, right? If, for example, instead of all the intruder, I would get the larva, uh, the larva she will actually try to jump on me and try to... Yeah, this, this, I, I was watching where this was going and I'm, I'm signaling to Ben behind the camera. I don't want him to say what I think he's about to say. What happens when he jumps on you? Oh, well, basically you get infected and, and whenever, whenever you, you know, like there's an also event card that will say you, if it will at you, you're putting this item here. And if there will be a card saying, then you need to find a, you know, like surgery to cut it out. Oh man. But if, if you will not, and there will be an even, you're basically dead. And out of you crumbles this little fella. And would you then start to control this? You can start controlling aliens after that. Oh wow. Now you have a special little mechanic for showing the infection. Yeah. Yeah. So basically whatever, you know, like something will, will bite you or not, you got those cards. Now, I'm not sure how well this is going to show up on camera, but this is really cool. Come in close and see this, Ben. They have some contaminations. They basically make you... What you're doing, I will show you how they work. So you're putting it into deck of your actions. Okay. So this is a filler that you cannot use it, 
but you know, like it comes up, up to your six, so you have less action because you've t you're tired. Oh, I see. Yeah, makes sense. You don't know if it is infection or not until you grab yourself a scanner, Mark IV. Now, let's. I hope this is going to show to everyone at home. But what you do with the scanner is you move it right over the card, and you can see where it tells you whether you are infected or not, hidden within basically like binary code. Um, and that's just such a nice effect. So you can it's just a prototype, but in the lower it will be more visible, yeah. but it will be hidden, so you never know if you're not or in. And until you go to the room and get a scanner. And the fun factor is that you can even, you know, like you can uh, leave the game. You can go to the hatch control. You can shoot yourself from hatch, and then it will tell you. But you need to see if the infection will not kill you. Oh my word! So you can even lose the game if you lose it because you know, like if you, you cannot win the game with the, you know, like intruder the inside you. Um, wow. Now, if, if I take over, if, if I do become a, an intruder, if I become an alien, can I still win the game by killing everybody? Is yeah. that? Yeah. Uh, that's actually an easier job. <laughs> <laughs> Well, look, thank you so much, Martin. I think this looks amazing. It's coming to Kickstarter, hopefully at the start of 2018, maybe sooner. Yeah, we'll but see. yeah, Lords of Hellas is delivering um, very, very soon. This will be soon after. And something, any of you guys like me who maybe don't uh, paint a lot of miniatures, you're going to be able to get the game like this with, with just the minis in, in sort of the grey or with the, the Zenith airbrushing. But if you want to on the Kickstarter, it's completely optional. You'll be able to go for the painted minis as we see on the Intruders and Aliens here. So you're going to have the option to choose your different pledge levels to get the kind of miniatures that you like that we've already seen with Lords of Hellas, but they're now taking it that extra level to get some real sticky, icky looking aliens. Fantastic, Martin. Well, look, thank you so, so much for the demo. Um, whether you're watching on YouTube or on Board Game Geek or indeed on BeastOfWar.com, please come over to BeastOfWar.com, head to the live blog we have for Essen, Thursday, Friday, Saturday and Sunday. Stick your comments, let us know what you want to see, and we'll catch you in a new update soon.